we want to solve the given absolute value equation. This absolute value equation is fairly challenging. Notice we have the sum of two absolute values equals seven. For the first step, with the absolute values isolated on one side of the equation, we begin by determining the zeros of the absolute values. The absolute value of the quantity x plus two is equal to zero when x equals negative two, and the absolute value of the quantity x minus three is equal to zero when x equals three. We now use these values and create intervals from the zeros. Considering the real number line, if we exclude negative two and positive three, on the left we have the open interval from negative infinity to negative two. In the middle we have the open interval from negative two to three. On the right we have the open interval from three to infinity. Step three, we now consider the inputs into the absolute values over the given intervals. If the input is positive, we list the original input. If the input is negative, we list the opposite input. So let's first consider the input of x plus two over the open interval from negative infinity to negative two. Remember, this is the same as when x is less than negative two. Well, x plus two is negative over this interval, and therefore, if you want to remove the absolute value over this interval, we have to list the opposite of the input, or the opposite of the quantity x plus two. And now let's consider the input of x minus three from the second absolute value. x minus three is also negative, when x is less than negative two, or over the open interval from negative infinity to negative two, and therefore we list the opposite of the input, or the opposite of x minus three. Using these two expressions, we can now eliminate the absolute values in the equation, but just over this interval. And now let's consider the inputs in the next open interval from negative two to three. x plus two is always positive over this interval, and therefore we just list the input of x plus two. However, x minus three is still negative over this interval, and therefore we list the opposite of the input, or the opposite of the quantity x minus three. Again, over this interval, we could replace the absolute values with these two expressions. And then finally, on the right, when x is greater than three, or when x is on the open interval from three to infinity, both x plus two and x minus three are positive, and therefore we list the original inputs of x plus two and x minus three. And for our final and fourth step, we now write and solve equations using the columns of expressions. However, the solution must be in the given interval to be a solution to the original equation. So using the first column of the table, we sum these two expressions and set them equal to positive seven, the right side of the original equation. And then for the middle interval, we sum x plus two and the opposite of x minus three and set it equal to seven. And then finally in the third column, we sum the two expressions and set it equal to seven. And now we solve these equations, and the solution must be in the given interval to be a solution to the original equation. Beginning on the left, let's remove these parentheses. The opposite of x plus two is negative x minus two. Here, instead of writing plus the opposite of the quantity x minus three, we could have just written minus the quantity x minus three. Either way, removing the parentheses, we end up with minus x plus three, which is equal to seven on the right. And now we combine like terms, we have negative two x plus one equals seven. Subtracting one on both sides, we have negative two x equals six. Dividing both sides by negative two, we have x equals negative three. Negative three is in the open interval from negative infinity to negative two, or it is less than negative two, and therefore x equals negative three is a solution to the original equation. Removing the parentheses in the second equation, we could have also written this as just x plus two minus the quantity x minus three equals seven. Either way, removing the parentheses here, we end up with x plus two minus x plus three equals seven. Combining like terms, notice here the x terms simplify to zero, leaving us with five equals seven. Of course, five doesn't equal seven. This indicates we don't have any solutions over this interval. And now for the last equation on the right, combining like terms, we have two x minus one equals seven. Adding one to both sides gives us two x equals eight. Dividing both sides by two, we have x equals four. Four is in the open interval from three to infinity, and therefore this is a solution to the original absolute value equation. So we have two solutions, x equals negative three, or x equals four. Before we go, let's verify this graphically. To do this, we'll use desmos.com, graph the left side of the equation, then graph the right side of the equation, and analyze the graph to determine the points of intersection. The x-coordinates of the points of intersection represent the solutions. And notice how we do have two points of intersection where x equals negative three, 
or x equals positive 4, verifying our solutions are correct. I hope you found this helpful.